So, okay. Now, so the purpose of this is why do we need an external IV? Well, as you know, you can't, you, the, a lot of, uh, when I first started with simulation, our, I, uh, we had our simulators came with a little tiny thing popping out of their arm where you could run fluids into, but you were limited in what fluids you could run. You could only run sterile water and there was a limit to how much you could put in because the tank only held X amount. And if you put anything in there that didn't, that wasn't sterile water, you had to worry about all the, all the vasculature inside of your uh, simulator clotting up. So I had to come up with a solution. So we started by put taping IVs on the outside of the arms, but then once you tape an IV there and you have it already on the simulator when you begin a simulation, then the participants don't have to think about the fact that they need to start an IV. So I started wondering, well, okay, so how do I accomplish this? And that's what I came up with. with and so the other things I'm going to show you today is how do you make one? And finally, I have a materials list so that you can build your own. Right now, I'm going to stop sharing a second so I can talk. Now, what we want to do, the whole purpose of this, when I first started, I wanted to have some sort of way where they had to go through the motion of saying, okay, I'm starting an IV. So what I did was I took some wrist restraints and literally glued suction connecting tubing to it with an, a hub outlet that could connect to the IV tubing. And then I connected the other end into a suction container. And that worked pretty good for a while, but the problem is those foam cuffs from the, uh, from the wrist restraints would get dirty and they'd look terrible and stuff. So, but they functioned and the students couldn't give medications unless they started an IV. So it accomplished the task, but there had to be a better way. One of my colleagues, who's also a member of, of this alliance, Maurice King, came up and said, you know, I think I got a better solution. And she came up with a way to use the old skin off the Annie's. And since then, I have tweaked it and, and made it work a lot better. And that's what I'm going to show you right now is exactly how you can build your own. So let me share that screen with you. And here is the presentation. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get the strap that you're going to use for the external IV. Now to build this, I use Gorilla Tape, and this is a two-inch tape. It's a little under two inches. So you want to make sure when you cut yourself a strip, it's wider than the size of the Gorilla Tape. Now here I'm using the skin from an old Annie, so I'm going to actually start above the nipples because I want a nice smooth piece of plastic. So I'm just going to cut across here. And now I'm going to stay on the inside of the fold, obviously, because I want a smooth piece of plastic. I'm just going to cut myself a couple of these, cut across the top. And then come across, and this should be enough for two of them. So now if I divide this in half, I have enough here to make myself two external IVs. Voila. That's what you're going to use as a strap. 
Okay, once you've cut your strips, you're going to want to round off one end just to make it nice and smooth and look good. So you just round off the corners. And leave it like that. So now we got a nice smooth end. This is going to be our attachment point. Now, once you have the end of the strap nice and rounded, I usually just wrap it around my hand to mark it. And then I see that the mark is going to be right about here. So this is where I'm going to cut now the other end. Of course, when I marked it, I did it backwards. So this time I'm going to correct it by going ahead and finish cutting the rest of the strap. Now I'm done with my IV strap. I can toss this away. Now once you have the strap cut, you want to go ahead and take one end of it and put a hole in it where you're actually going to connect the uh, snaps. So I just got a handy hole puncher here that I use. However, there's nothing to prevent you from just using a drill or even just a sharp object just to create that opening. And then you punch the hole. And there's your hole. Now this gives me a place to put the strap, the, the snap I mean. Now for putting the snaps in place, I bought this nice little cheap kit, cost about seven, eight bucks at, at Amazon. And it comes with the whole, the tools that you need to, to put the snaps in place plus the snaps themselves. And you can buy extra bags of this for uh, replacements. They come like 100 in a kit, so you get to about 25 snaps for each one. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the snap I'm going to use, and I'm going to put it through the hole here. And then I'm going to put the other part that's going to snap on the bottom through the bottom. And then, okay, let me show you that again. Put the snap through the top and this part through the bottom. There, I've got to make sure I stay in the camera or zone. And now I need to finish it off by using the little punch. So I'm going to put the bottom that's round for the snap on underneath. And I'm going to use the punch on top. And with a hammer, I'm just going to tap it in there. And voila, I now have it snap permanently in this strap. Now the other ones I'm going to do, I'm going to punch some more holes in it just to give myself a little variability. That way if I got a, if I'm using a pediatric simulator or something, then I don't want to snap it as hard. So I'm going to give myself a little adjustments. So I'll put a couple more holes in here. Put another one here at the end and another one a little farther up maybe an inch over and just for good measure I think I'm going to add a third one okay so now I've got all the holes put now I've got to do is put in the other side of the snap so again I take the other part of the little snap tool parts if I can get it apart. Now this has to obviously fasten to the bottom of this strap here. So I want to make sure when I put it in there that I get the right side. And trust me, I've done this enough times wrong to know it's real easy to get backwards. So double check yourself. Put the inside of this through the pinhole. And then the snap part on top. Double check yourself. So you got to make sure you got it on the right part. And now you're going to take the fastening tool, turn it upside down, put that on there, and then I'm going to smack the other part of it sealed. And voila, now I have a strap I can connect to my simulator. Just like that. Easy on, easy off. Now I'm going to go ahead 
and put the other ones in place. So I'm going to need to use some more of these. Okay, now that I have my strap ready to go, and I want to, and just so for sake of argument, I use the piece that's about 11 inches long. Again, if you wanted to put an IV for a leg or something, you may want to make it longer. But for the wrist, 11 inches gives me more than enough. With these three little straps, it gives me about an inch of an inch and a half, two inches of play on each side. So because I'm going to go ahead and snap it to the center one, and then to put the hole where the IV is going to come out, I want to put it just opposite of the center hole, so I would go right about here, and that's where I'm going to put the hole that I'm going to use to run the A-line through. So just punch a hole right in the center of it. And I may need to go to a slightly bigger size to get it in there easier. So again, just a small little hole, and you can use a punch or anything like that to get it. Alright, so what I used for tubing was an A-line kit. The tubing that comes in an A-line kit. This is usually the little short one that goes right from the catheter to the connection point and then this goes to the pressure monitor, the, to the transducer itself. So I'm going to use the little short piece as my hub of the IV. So I'm going to, now I need to shove this through this little hole. So I'm going to make that hole a little bigger. Now because I have this handy little touch punch pool tool, I can make, it's easy for me to go ahead and make the holes bigger. Again, you can do it using a sharp object, a drill, whatever it is that you want to do. You want to make it big enough so you can actually get this piece through here. And that is the challenging part. So what helps you to do that is to make it oblong. So if you put a couple of holes right next to each other, like so, That'll make it easier for you to get the piece through there. Still a little tight. Go in from the inside and see if I can't pull it through. Let me unsnap it so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm basically forcing it through to the other side. And since it's plastic, it's pretty flexible. You notice how easy it is to do. There. Once you get that piece through there, then it becomes easy. Now you've got it finished for the most part of what you wanted to accomplish. So now you've got the connecting tubing where you're going to function as the IV hub on this side and this side going through to the other side where you're going to connect it to the other high pressure line. To use. Now the reason you use high pressure tubing, A-line tubing, hemodynamic tubing, is because it's hard and rigid and it won't collapse on you like IV tubing is. So that's why I use the hard pressure monitoring tool, uh, tubing, the hard fle inflexible tubing. Okay, so now that you've got the tubing through there, you want to work, since it comes curved to begin with, you want to use that to your advantage. So you want to work with that curve rather than working against it because then the, I, the IV hub is going to always want to stand up. So you want to work with the tube. And then what we're going to do is we are going to fasten it on the other side. So now I need to cut myself a piece of tape from the Gorilla Tape. Ugh stuff is strong and that's the good thing about it is once you get it on there it stays on there so you cut yourself a nice piece of off and now making sure I have this just where I want it I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the tape over the top of it now put it right up against the tubing and then bend it up over the top of the tubing so that it supports the tubing real well and then just finish doing 
the tape on there. Believe me, when you put this sucker on there, it's going to stay on there and you don't have to worry about it moving anymore. So now, we basically got our IV tubing done. We're going to connect this part to the other to the rest of the tubing. So I would connect this here. And then you run this down to a, and I'm going to show you how to build a little connection for this end so you can actually connect it to a suction container. So all the fluids and all the medications and everything you put through this IV end up in the suction container and all, all over the floor. Now once you have the back end, the inside part of the IV tubing hooked up, and I'm going to disconnect this tubing now, just make it easier for me to work with. I'll connect it later. Now I want to use some kind of fixation device similar to whatever it is that you use in your facility. And I'm going to put that around the IV to make it look real and professional. And this is what this is one of the ones we use in our system. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off. All right. So now we have a fully functioning IV. All we have to do is connect the rest of the high pressure tubing to it. And when we snap it on a patient, <laughs> there. Now that patient has an IV you can now use to give fluids and medications through and you don't have to worry about the tank and your simulator filling up or the fact that whatever fluid you put in there isn't going to clot off or form uh, crystallize and mess up your simulator because everything's going to be on the outside of it. Okay, so now that we've hooked up the tubing, the rest of the tubing to the thing, we need to cut this tip off because there's no way you're going to be able to get that lure lock attached. Now with this piece of suction connecting tubing, you just cut yourself off a little piece like that. And what you're going to do is, you're going to insert the tubing all the way nice and deep inside so that the tip is all the way over here. And then in here, we are going to put in this auto marine sealant which you can buy at Home Depot or, or Amazon or anything like that and this is what the package looks like and then we're going to squirt the glue inside of here And you can shove it in a little further to help it grab. And I usually like to force it in with my fingers. I like to get as much in that, in that tubing, the suction tubing, as possible. So if you force it in, you're going to get a nice good connecting seal and it won't pull apart on you. And then you can round it off, make it look nice and pretty smooth it out and this is more about function than it is about beauty so once you have it in there now all we need to do is let this dry for 24 hours and voila we have suction connecting to uh, an IV an external IV that we can use on any simulator all right now here I have one that I did made previously and I want you to see that where I plugged it into the suction tubing and you can see that it's in there real solid and it's not coming loose and there's really relatively little glue inside of here holding it but it works like a champ and that is how you build your own external IV.
So simple, but it works. And the beauty of it is you can not only use it on a, on a simulator, it also works for your standardized patients. So they can start an IV on your standardized patient without actually having to torture the poor standardized patient by starting an actual IV. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Okay, there was a question there that's movable. Yeah, you can just snap it off one and put it on the other. Now, what I did in order to keep from on the back end of my stretchers, I built a little bracket to hold the suction containers so that when you move the bed back and forth, you don't have to worry about knocking over the suction containers and stuff. And I usually use a a two liter or a three liter suction container. So I, they can dump a whole bunch of fluids in there before I got to change it. And is this by gravity, Nelson, that the fluid drains into the container? Actually, it's just the pressure of the syringe. If you use a syringe ah, okay. or the IV pump that just makes it move right on through. It doesn't depend right. on gravity. And you can make it, you can use a long enough piece of suction connecting tubing so that you know you can mount it anywhere you want far away as long right. because it's sealed so it won't leak got it thanks it's simple but man it's effective and you can use all the fluids you want and 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 because in our lab we use normal saline because that's the cheapest fluid we can get from our central supply and we use different size uh normal saline bags to make all our medications. We just put a medication label on the, on the uh, normal saline bag and that becomes our medications. So we don't have to buy the fancy, you know, expensive fake meds. Right. How many of these uh, devices you actually ended up uh, building? Is this, uh, are these are durable or, or? Yeah, they're pretty durable. They last for a while. And again, that's the secret. When you use that hard hemodynamic tubing, because it's, it's, it's made to hold the pressure so that it works with a transducer, it doesn't kink off on you. And because there's really no place for any stress or anything, you know, you just, when, when you, one bad, when you, when you get done, or if you want to start a second or third IV, you just go ahead and get another kit and snap it on there. And again, the beauty of it is that you can't use it until you put it on the patient. Mm -hmm. So they have to, the, your, your participants have to realize, oh, I can't give anything unless I start an IV. Because if you start using the, the mannequins that have the built-in IV ports, then, this, then the participants don't have to think about, oh, I need to start an IV. And if you use like a real IV in one of those you know, simulators that allow you to push IVs in there, you're limited to how much you can put in before it fills up. So this allows you to, you know, when you got a patient and you're saying, hey, I want to run that I want to run a couple of liters with pressure bags. It actually allows you to do that. Do you have an estimated cost for the whole kit? Like for uh, one kit, how much that would cost? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Actually, uh, I have a, let me, let me bring it up. I'll share that with you. I have a cut list that I think uh, Mariana actually put in the, in, the, in the chat. Yeah. In the chat there, but let me oh, bring good. it up for you so you can see. All right, so you see this little kit that, that I used to make, to put the snaps in. It was only like, like under six bucks on Amazon. Wow, great. And then, you, and then the snaps, all these, you can get a whole package of 100 pieces. That's actually enough for about 25 or so. And that only costs about 10 bucks. And you don't need a hole punch. You could just use a drill or a, or a sharp object but i i went ahead and splurged and spent the 10 bucks and got a, a leather punch okay yeah it looked uh, like you uh, needed something that was relatively like like the hole that was being created initially was a relatively small hole is that correct and then you just widened yeah. that by punching it several more times uh-huh and okay. but actually this punch if you get one to say go ahead and splurge and spend the 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 nine bucks 
it comes with different size punches so ah. you can actually make the holes bigger okay and then the other thing you need is gorilla tape now when i went to they make gorilla tape in white which kind of looks a lot nicer than the black one i use mm -hmm. but when i went to go buy my gorilla tape at home depot they were out of the white stuff so i just went with the black because it's actually on the sure. inside anyway and it doesn't really show right. and then the most ex expensive part is the silicone uh sealant the 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 glue mm -hmm. but this I, I mean, I've I've used maybe a not even a quarter of of a tube, and I've made at least eight or nine IVs with it. Oh, so it's okay. really not that expensive Great. to do. Great. And anyway, I'll include this, and it'll be on the web page so that you guys can. Uh, oh shoot! I just realized I wasn't showing you the. I wasn't sharing the screen. <laughs> sorry let me do that again all right hang on a second i'm sorry i should have i should have realized i wasn't showing the screen i apologize for that i forgot to share the screen all right share where is it where is it you guys still can't can you see that now we can yep okay so again here's the little tool kit that brings uh the little punch and the anvil on the bottom and it brings about six snaps with it so you're going to have to buy some extras sure. and here's the little kit that comes with all the with about 100 or so i think this one particular one has 108 pieces so that's enough for 27 snaps and then uh here's the punch that i have that has all the different uh -huh. hole sizes in it and that was nine bucks and i just priced these out in the last couple of days so these are current prices and the gorilla tape is relatively cheap it's like six under six dollars at home depot this is this is from amazon and again this is the white one but they come in different colors and then this is the marine sealant that I use, the DAP, and this, and like I said, this will be on the web page. Mariano is, is going to leave it on the web page so you guys can access the cut list and, and of course, look at the video again if you want to, you know, as you go to build it, you may want to review it again. Great. Right. Thank you. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's cheap, but it works. Nelson, I work a lot with uh, standardized patients. Uh, will this? Uh, do you have a picture of any when when you were using it with a standardized picture, uh, standardized patient? Sorry, um, so I can visualize how is that going to work? Yeah, if you if you go back to remember when I was putting the the when I was snapping it on my arm, mm -hmm. when I was done, that's exactly the way it looks on the standardized patient. Okay, all right. You know, the only thing is you have you have the the suction tubing coming down and going into the thing but that's not really too much of a distraction and again if they don't you know so they still have to wash flex you know uh clean the hub and they still got to connect the the either the syringe or the iv tubing and so you know they still have to go through all the motions and that was really what i was after because i didn't want the patient patients don't walk in the door with ivs on so you got that's one of the things they have to learn is oh i need access so this allowed me to they can only have access if they go through the motion of actually putting one of these on okay i i, I understand now so. so it's it's not world breaking uh <laughs> anything special but it's something that that is that i think all of you will probably be able to use mm -hmm. And, and once you do use it, I think you're really going to like it because of the fact that it does allow you to to give unlimited medications and fluids through those IVs. Does anybody have any other questions for Nelson? Okay, well, again, my name is Nelson Pena, and I work for Baptist Health South Florida down here in Miami, Florida. I run the simulation lab. I'm the supervisor of the simulation lab down here, and I believe I had my uh, 
information on here. Let me make sure. Yeah. Oh God, I just erased it. Okay. There we go. Let me share that with you. And there's my contact information. So if you got any questions or you got it, or if you have any suggestions on how to do it better, then by all means, share that with me because I'm always trying to learn and make things better. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, also invite the members of the Alliance uh, to, if you have any, own, any idea similar to what Nelson just provided us, uh, share with us, uh, get in touch with us and uh, we can have our next webinar with, with you, uh, uh, showcasing your, your creation. All right, so uh, I, I guess there's no more questions. Uh, it's a little 5.36. Uh, we can uh, give you back 30 minutes of your time and appreciate, thank you for your uh, coming to this uh, uh, presentations. Uh, our next presentation will be uh, in, and a month from now, and we, uh, if you guys want to have anything we'd like to present, please get in touch with us uh, on the website. Uh, we are uh, trying to do this in a monthly uh, capacity. So uh, thank you, Nelson, and thank you, everybody. Um, have a great uh, weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nelson. Great job. Thank you, Daisy. <laughs> All right. Let me stop. Mariano, could you wait a little bit? Sure.